And if you're going to take the time and effort and expense to get really good cognac and a really good steak, great ingredients, give yourself a little extra credit. Do something cool like a little flame. Now all I added there was a touch of cream. Alright, it wasn't a touch. It was, it was a cup of cream. After I flamed the pan, caramelized those flavors. You know what I'm doing here. We've talked about it. I'm using the cream as, and the cognac as a means by which to get all the fun and the fabulous up off the bottom of the pan. And at this point, I'm going to introduce salt. And this is kosher salt. I finally found some. Yay! And we want a good bit. We got some pretty intense flavors and we don't have any so far on the meat. Now, as impressive as this dish looks, I got nothing to do for the next couple minutes. So I'm going to sit here and just watch that simmer. Okay, back, back, are we back, are we back, are we back? All right, da, da, da. All right I'm seriously. We now have three minutes per side. It's my favorite kitchen tool, but I swear sometimes. Anyway. The steaks come off. Ooh, ooh they almost really went off. Alright. I'll set anytime you're cooking any kind of meat. The number one favor you can give to yourself is to let it rest. When meat is cooking, the juices kind of all brush to the surface. That's why you get caramelization, and caramelization is fabulous. You like that. But when you cut into it, you don't want the juice right underneath that to go running onto the plate. You want it to redistribute through the meat. If you give it a minute, let it redistribute, it will. All I'm doing there is drown it, browning, draining off. Mm. Most of the fat. Here's my next trick. I'm actually gonna bring the heat down just a tad at this point. Because what I'm, oop, wait. Out of order. Leave yourself a little bit. Cognac. Okay? Keep your fingers crossed this works. Now, if you're in a restaurant, you're going to see a lot of waiters do a lot of cute little fireside things. They're going to flomp a things. There we go. They're going to use a match. matches, but I do have a few power tools hanging around the house. Flaming will also intensify the flavors in alcohol. And if you're going to take the time and effort and expense to get really good cognac and a really good steak, great ingredients, give yourself a little extra credit. Do something cool like a little flame. Now all I added there was a touch of cream. Alright, it wasn't a touch. It was, it was a cup of cream. After I flamed the pan, caramelized those flavors. You know what I'm doing here. We've talked about it. I'm using the cream as, and the cognac as a means by which to get all the fun and the fabulous up off the bottom of the pan. And at this point, I'm going to introduce salt. And this is kosher salt. I finally found some. Yay! We want a good bit. We got some pretty intense flavors, and we don't have any so far on the meat. Now, as impressive as this dish looks, I got nothing to do for the next couple minutes. So I'm going to sit here and just watch that simmer. When you're working with cream, normally you don't want to simmer. A lot of times you'll curdle your cream. I'm not sure what little magic happens with the 
cognac and the cream in this dish, but this is actually what you're looking for. And you can tell, see where the level of the liquid was when I first added it? See how we've reduced? Uh, five minutes. Okay. The other trick to tell, okay, if you've been reducing long enough, and I always keep two spoons. This is the one that goes in my mouth. This is how you don't double dip, but you test your food. You don't ever, ever, ever put food on the table without testing it first. See that? I've coated the back of the spoon. My sauce is nice and thick and rich and reduced. Okay. This is my tester spoon. Right like that. No cross-contamination. Now, we added a little bit of salt right before we started reducing the sauce. You don't want to add too much because you're going to reduce the sauce and you're going to concentrate the salt. At this point, just a tiny bit is all it needs. Okay? So I'm going to get rid of the whisk. Grabbing my steaks. It was sitting over here under the foil, staying pretty and happy. They come in here. Now, you see that? Don't get rid of that. Oh my gosh. No, he goes in there too. You want that. That's fabulous. Okay. Simplest thing in the world. Because they've already rested, now I turn my heat off. One. My little baby bit of cognac right there. Right in my sauce. That's why we saved that last little bit. You know, if you forget to put it in your sauce, it's not that big a deal. Cover it up. <laughs> Just out of the bottle. But it's good in the sauce. That is steak up poivre. Simple, easy, and absolutely fabulous. I got over here with no steak knife. Steak knife. Give me a second, I'll find a steak knife, and then I'll show you what it's supposed to look like inside. Okay, well, I didn't find a steak knife. I found my pretty little paring knife. So, he rested, remember, when he tinted, and all he did was rewarm for just a moment. And the pan, oh my gosh, that's like butter. You almost don't need a sharp knife. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Come here. Do you see that? That is about as beautiful as it gets. And this little piece that I took off the side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I meant, wait, 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 I'm having issues, of course, it's going to try, alright, no, that, that, that big, alright, so, 